the Debrinic Channel is back, and today we are talking about the Colorado River. We will be doing a Colorado River update today, and we're going to roll right out to Tropical Tidbits to check the weather to see how this will affect the Colorado River. As you can see, we're going to start off our Monday with high pressure over the Colorado River. A little bit of rain here into Northern California, Oregon, and Washington. We'll see what ultimately happens with that. And we scoot on, and you can see that not a whole lot. There is an atmospheric river heading to the west coast. More precipitation going to hit. It has shifted more towards the north as we're getting later into the season. A little bit up here in Utah as well, and a little bit over here towards the Flaming Gorge area. And you can see this is going to be a little bit of snow here. We are currently sitting about 95% of the snowpack, so we definitely need some more. It's not near as good as it was last year but it's not bad 95% is better than 70 where it has been in the past several years so it's a little bit better than it was it'd be nice to be above March 13th we are looking at snow and you remember back in 83 and 84 whenever they received all this precipitation if you were alive then a lot of it came in late March and May so we will see if that holds to pass you can see there is a low pressure kicking in here and some of its rain some of its snow the higher elevation elevations obviously snow the valleys rain you can see this is Thursday and it continues to snow back here now it's not real heavy it's not real intense but snow snow we will take what we can get and it does intensify a little bit right around the divide but there is snow all the way back looks like maybe a little bit of low pressure right there as well you have this low pressure out here in Missouri as well we're at the 14th and you can see it continues to snow so any snow is better than no snow we will take what we can get it has shifted more towards the other side of the divide so but there is still some precipitation back here and you can see it's really getting squeezed in here all this moisture is just coming out so this is good news i don't know how much this equivalents into snow rain equivalent but it's definitely continuing to rain we'll be checking that out over at windy.com it's not real intense you can see like it is lower than the rest you have a 1016 here and you have a 1008 here so definitely different and you can see it moves down towards Lake Navajo and it's really intense there so that could be good news if that happens we will see and it continues to snow this is crazy we're already into Friday so a long period there it's a dirty high pressure and it's still snowing there that is crazy and it's still snowing there all the way to Saturday that is real good news you can see it continues to snow and it starts to scoot away finally it dies down it's not near as intense as it was but it snows all the way until Sunday so that's a good possibility we'll see then it kind of dries out you can see there's really not no precipitation everything's way up into Canada the United States from coast to coast is fairly dry with the exception up here just a little bit and over here in Pennsylvania New York and northeast and it's very light at best we continue to scoot away and you can see this alberta clipper here getting a little bit of steam we'll see if it comes down it's scurries up into the northern part of the united states southern canada another low pressure right here it's not near as intense it's only 1005 that's not very good isobars as we continue to scoot on here you can see that some of this makes it down into the colorado we have a low pressure over here have a little bit of rain back here in california not a whole lot going on it, it scoots away and then there's more snow up here so this is good news if it comes to pass we're march 23rd so we're quite a ways out that's 13 days and it's still snowing back here this really taps into the gulf of mexico as you can see this moisture is all the way back here towards denver and just to the west of the divide so that's good news for the colorado and it starts to move away and it dries out but there's another alberta clipper kicking down here and it, it must converge with this this becomes a monster as you can see the conveyor belt march 24th two weeks from today possibly you have a low pressure here this thing's massive 99 93 isobars getting ready to hit over there not much coming into california nothing really on the west coast nothing into colorado we continue and you could see that that's pretty well going to do it. And this storm is taking all the energy out of the atmosphere. Look at this 997 isobars. Canada is going to get hit with a doozy if this really comes to pass. It's a very long way out. Something you Canadians will definitely have to be watching. And we continue to scoot. You can see that scoots away. A low pressure right here. 
We'll see if that does anything on the next frame, and it doesn't, and that's the end of that. Let's go to windy.com and see what the current forecast is for the Colorado River here and see if there's much precipitation coming or very little at all. As we scoot in here, this is the European model. You can see down here they're calling for possibly almost two inches between Page and Sapa and Tuba City down here. That could be good news. The GFS, however, is calling for a half inch. However, over here by Telluride, they're talking almost two inches. But down here, you could see 2.77 near the Lake Navajo watershed. And this is good news. As you saw that, that was a lot of snow. So let's go see what the snow accumulation might be. Now, the upper part of the Colorado, not so much. They're not receiving much pre precipitation. Denver, however, could get rocked with a big snowstorm I think let's find out new snow yes you're talking 28 possibly inches and that's the GFS the European however is calling for 3.7 in the same spot and over here they're calling for 15 so very diverse we'll see what ultimately happens one thing I have noticed is the GFS is more widespread and the European tries to break it down more into where it's going to hit. So I'll tell you, ride could possibly get 16 inches, but Denver on the other side of the divide could get a foot and just to the west of Denver, 19 inches. But we go up here, 3.8. So we will see. We're rooting for the GFS. Hopefully this is more accurate. That would be great for Lake Navajo. It's way down. So they definitely could use some precipitation. So 28 inches there. Page 7.4. Of course, Vegas is not going to get in on the action zero. And the European, they're calling for zero as well. So we will see. That is what we have going on there. Let's roll out to the graphs and see what's going on next. As we roll out to the Flaming Gorge, we will start there like we always do. And now I have it, so I will not be misspeaking. Speaking again, 2024, we're looking at 6,025.99 feet, and that was Sunday, March 10th, 2024, 2 p.m. The level is 21.01 feet below full pool of 6,047. Changes since yesterday, the lake is up 0.2 feet over the last 24 hours. The lake is also up 0.18 feet over the last seven days over the last 14 days the lake is up 0 0.26 feet so the lake has actually started to get some of that snow melt over the last 30 the lake is down 0 0.16 feet over the last 120 days the lake is down 3.12 feet so you only lost three feet over the last year that's not too shabby for flaming gorge it's making a nice recovery after it gave it that bump back in 21 whenever it gave it that extra water it's really recovering nicely so we go to the last year and the lake is up 20.20 feet over the last year. We go to your inflows. Inflows are 1,432. Your outflows are 1,000. We go to your three-year bar graph and 6,018.09 feet in 2022. 605.79 last year. Today we're looking at 6,025.99 feet and percentage of capacity is currently 82.33%. Let's go to Blue Mesa next. As we roll out to Blue Mesa, the current water level 7,487.95 feet and that was Sunday, March 10th, 2024 at 2 p.m. The level is currently 31.05 feet below full pool of 7,519. Changes since yesterday, the lake is down 0.03 feet over the last 24 hours over the last seven days same thing 0.03 feet that's good it's starting to get some melt over the last 14 days the lake is up 0.13 feet over the last 30 days however the lake is down 0.52 feet over the last 120 days 3.53 feet not terrible for for six months during the dry season so we'll take that but over the last year we are up 39.64 feet your inflows are 389 your outflows are 509 we go to your three year bar graph and your three year bar graph in 2022 the level was 7436.64 feet last year we we're looking at 7448.31 feet and today we're at 7487.95 feet and of course percentage of capacity 67.72 percent let's go over to Lake Navajo next. As we roll to Lake Navajo, you can see that the current water level 6,041.43 feet, and that was Sunday, March 10th, 2024 at 2 p.m. The level is 43.57 feet below full pool of 6,085. 
have changes since yesterday. The lake is down 0.01 feet over the last 24 hours. Over the last 7 days, the lake is also down 0.16 feet. Over the last 14 days, the lake is down 0.045 feet. Over the last 30 days, the lake is down about a foot, 0.05 feet. Over the last 120 days, the lake's only down 3.82 feet. So that's not terrible for 6 months. It could have been a lot worse, so we will take that. However, the lake is also up from that good year last year, 23.31 feet. Inflows are 386. Your outflows are 388. So a little bit more going out than coming in today. And we go to your three-year bar graph. 2022, the level was 6,017.85 feet. Last year, we were at 6,018.12 feet. And today, we're at 6,041.43 feet. Percentage of capacity, 63.43%. Let's go down to Lake Powell next. As we roll out to Lake Powell, your current water level is 3,561.10 feet. And that was Sunday, March 10th, 2024 at 2 p.m. The level is 138. 8.90 feet below full pool of 3,700 changes since yesterday. The lake is down 0.11 feet over the last 24 hours. Over the last 7 days, the lake is down 0.71 feet. Over the last 14 days, the lake is down 1.55 feet. Over the last 30 days, the lake is down 3.09 feet. And over the last 120 days, the lake is down 11.23 feet. Over the last year, Lake Powell is up 40.60 feet. Your inflows are 5,814, and they're still releasing. Well, they're only releasing 9,938. They were releasing 11 to 13 earlier in the season, so they have slowed those down a bit. So that's good news. So it won't be too much longer. Lake Powell should start to increase probably very soon, I would imagine, as the snow melt starts to melt off. We are getting closer to April, and April leads to May, and things start to really start to cook at that point in time with it probably peaking in about june or so so we'll be watching that lake pal three-year bar graph of course we were at 3525.52 in 2022 3520.50 feet last year and 3561.10 feet today percentage of capacity we are at 32.34 percent and over to Lake Mead we go next. As we roll out to Lake Mead, the current water level is 1,076.31 feet. And that was Sunday, March 10th, 2024 at 2 p.m. The level is 143.29 feet below a full pool of 1,219.60 feet. And the lake is up 0.01 feet over the last 24 hours. However, for the first time in a long time, the lake is down 0.29 feet over the last 7 days. Over the last 14 days, the lake is down 0.19 feet over the last 14. However, the lake is also up 2.03 feet over the last 30 days. Over the last 120 days, the lake is up 11.50 feet. Over the last year, the lake is up 30.24 feet. So that's an incredible recovery being that Lake Powell came up 40 feet and it's still up 40 feet. And now Lake Mead is up 30.20 feet. We'll take that. Your inflows are 12,000. 148. Your outflows, they have bumped those up. They're up to 11,851. Now, they still have an obligation. See, a lot of people are confused on this. I've seen people talk about this. The reason for this increase, as stated before, and I'll state it again and again, hold. they have come to the agreement that they're going to hold back 3 million acre feet of the systems committed by the lower basin states. 2.3 million feet of that which will be compensated through funding through the Inflation Reduction acts by the Biden administration. So there you have it, folks. That is what's going on, and that is what's up. This is why the lake has been rising so dramatically. They haven't had to release the amount of water that they had to do in the past. They used to release 9.5 million acre feet, and I heard it's as low as 7 million acre feet, but I'm not certain on that. I can't find that they're going to be releasing a million less every year from what I gather. So a million less is huge. That's a lot of water going to increase. My guess is if we just get normal rainfall and average as we're right about now, we're just a little under, but we're pretty close to normal, then the lake will probably rise about 30 to 40 feet every year. So three years from now, the lake could possibly be 120 foot higher. Now, if we get some real heavy rain or snow or a kind combination of both the lake will be much higher if we get less rain then the lake will be lower but it will still be higher ultimately yet so 
time will tell. Let's roll out to the three-year graph. And the three-year graph, we are currently looking at 1,065.08 feet. In 2022, last year being at the low, we are at 1,046.07 feet. So we are seven feet higher than we were in 2022 with today's level being 1,076.31 feet. And just when I first started doing this, broadcast we were almost to 1100 feet and it has dropped steadily ever since up until this year so that's just the fluctuations of lakes and it does help that the government stepped in and said whoa we can't do this because it just continues to fall so the percentage of capacity we're in the yellow we'll take that 37.51 percent maybe by next year at this time maybe we'll be in the blue that would be fantastic at 66 percent that would be great but long way out we will see lake mojave here we come. As we roll out to Lake Mojave, the current water level is 641.91 feet, and that was Sunday, March 10th, 2024. At 2 p.m., the level is 5.06 feet below full pool of 647. Changes since yesterday, the lake is up 0.01 feet over the last 24 hours. Over the last seven days, the lake is up 0.09 feet. Over the last 14 days, the lake is down 0.14 feet, so basically a tenth of foot every day. Over the last 30 days, the lake is down 1.27 feet over the last 30 days. Over the last 120 days, the lake is up 4.58 feet. Over the last year, however, the lake is down 1.32 feet. Your inflows are currently 13,319. Your outflows are 14,552. And then we go to your three-year bar graph. 642.15 feet in 2022. 643.26 feet last year. And we are trending downwards this year. So we're about a foot or so lower than we were last year at this time, as stated earlier. 92.25% is your percent of capacity down to my favorite and final stop today lake havasu here we come as we roll out to lake havasu the current water level is 447.39 feet and that was sunday march 10th, 2024 at 2 p.m. The level is 2.61 feet below full pool of 450. Changes since yesterday. The lake is up 0.68 feet over the last 24 hours. The lake is up a foot over the last seven days with 1.02 feet. Over the last 14 days, the lake's only up 0.15 feet. And over the last 30, the lake is down 0.75 feet. Over the last 120 days, the lake is also down 0.53 feet. Over the last year, the lake is up 0.11 feet. And Inflows are 13,415. Your outflows are 10,510. 2022, we are looking at 448.02 feet. Last year, we were looking at 447.28 feet. Today, of course, we're at 447.38 feet. Percentage of capacity, 89.74%. Thank you guys for stopping by. Hope you enjoyed the video. We will see you on the next one. God bless.